Next up, API Metrics CEO David will be sharing how to pursue a common agreement on standards. Thank you, David. Hello. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Phil for that great warm up. Um, he actually raised a lot of topics um, around SLAs and measurement that I'm going to be touching on quite a lot because uh, it's not just about how we, um, it's not just about the, the fact that you need to measure these things and actually prove to people that their stuff is slow, but it's actually agreeing on the framework for how you agree it's slow. So uh, I'm going to talk a lot about trust in this. Um, trust clearly a noun, uh, relying on the assured reliance of character, ability, or something to do with that person, or something in which confidence is placed. And how that's going to apply is how we apply trust to APIs, particularly in regulated ecosystems like finance, how we measure ingrained trust in ecosystems in general, which touches on some of what Phil has been talking about, and how we maintain that trust over time. And, and one of the problems, and I, I think it came out of Phil's talk, is um, it can be very hard to get everybody on the same page as to what they are seeing, because people tend to do things in their own ways and have different experiences based on where they sit in the ecosystem and what they do. So to kick off, um, Mark Andreessen famously said, software is eating the world. That's my Ouroboros there. And Ron Miller added, but APIs are how they're doing it. And that's very true. And I think we've all agreed on this now, and that's why we're here. But in the world of open everything, I think we it's sometimes easy to forget who all the stakeholders are and how we interact with each other. And I, wanted, I like the analogy of the API ecosystem as a restaurant because it allows us to um, talk to non-engineering people about some of the different personas involved and tie them into something that they maybe have more experience of than the, the technical realm we live in. So if I look at the uh, restaurant ecosystem and break into stakeholders, but personas and their requirements, um, in the restaurant, we have the kitchen, the kitchen staff, support team, they've got equipment, supplies, skills, recipes, operational support, the washing up, the cleaning, everything to do with that. At the front of house, you've got wait staff, customers, the waiters deliver the food, the customers eat the food, they service tables, they seat people, they get them a drink. All the business operations related to what is coming out of the kitchen, but none of these people really work in the kitchen or necessarily particularly care what is going on in the kitchen as long as things arrive in a timely fashion and it gets to the people. But you can still get mismatched expectations, which I come on to. And then finally, you've got the external factors of reviewers and inspectors. You have fire marshals, you have uh, food restaurant critics, you've got food safety standards who are looking at all aspects of what's going on. But again, they're not actually part of the ecosystems uh, or part of the processes, neither the restaurant or the kitchen, they're external to them, but they can have big bearing on what's going on. And actually, I think this maps nicely to the API ecosystem where we have uh, technical um, developers working to technical standards with technology stacks, tooling, monitoring, and support. The stuff Phil was just talking about in his talk, actually. Um, but then you've got people managing them. Uh, they may be managing the API contracts. They may be managing SLAs in whatever way they can or offering SLAs. Uh, they may be looking at performance data, but they're separate to the, stat, the teams actually running those things. And one of the problems we have often in the industry is the people managing um, service delivery and operational delivery are separate to the teams who are building the technology in the first place. And there's a new wrinkle, particularly in fintech at the moment, with the UK further ahead than anybody else, but with other countries catching up fast, and with healthcare and with travel and with insurance and other sectors, you're getting quality standards mandated by third parties. Um, you're getting compliance and risk being built into that by the requirement to meet somebody else's dictated standards. And we need to have meaningful reporting and meaningful ways of handling disputes between parties who potentially are looking at very different parts of the, uh, the ecosystem. So I call this, the, the, I say with this, there is a trusting or there is an involving trust gap, which is a gap between the standards and the specifications bodies the technical implementation and the people measuring it. And I've been putting a lot of thoughts into how, how do we bridge that gap? What are the tools you need from a technical perspective, which is what my day job is, 
But what do we need uh, conceptually and as an industry to do? And, and I'm, I'm going to be—I'm excited to give you some news today, which um, was only announced last week. But it's the first time I'm talking about it in public with people. So we'll come on to the API Ratings Agency and the advisors who are going to try and address some of these questions for the entire industry. But first, I thought I'd give a couple of examples of um, why some of these uh, issues come about, what what causes them and uh, how they manifest themselves in our sector. So the first sort of thing is aligning of expectations. We call the, the essentially the error of parallax. Um, if you're an engineer, uh, this is an oldie but favorite. If you're looking at a thermometer, checking a temperature, and you look straight on at the gauge, you'll see two different, um, you'll see your number in a straight line, which will relate to the back end number. If somebody else stands in a different place and looks at the same marker on this side, they could be misreading the temperature dramatically. And you'll end up with a delta of measurement expectations between the two observers. Um, this is actually extremely common in um, latency measurements and APIs, that the location and position of the observer can affect, uh, affect what they're talking about with people. The second is simple confusion or error that you're buying different things. If I go to the restaurant example, I do like chips or French fries if you're an American. Um, I particularly like triple cooked chips where they've parboiled them and then cooked them twice. They are delicious. But essentially, a chip is the same if it's triple cooked by Herman Blumenthal, Heston Blumenthal, the three Michelin starred chef, or a fry cook in McDonald's. They're both French fries, they're both chips. The experience of buying them, the cost and the uh, taste are completely different. But technically, they're both the same thing. And it's very easy for people to think they are buying triple cooked trips and buy McDonald's and vice versa. And absent standards and agreed ways of, ways of measuring those standards, you can have the confusion and the disagreement on what they are. So how this manifests in APIs, the, the first area we see is just the documentation. Um, there can be too much of it. There can be often too little of it, or it can just be plain wrong. It can be missing things, or, or it can badly misuse standards, or it can implement standards incorrectly. Even in this day of dynamic documentation, tools like Stoplight and others, you can still see companies issue PDFs with their documentation on it. And if you've tried copying and pasting a digital signing key or uh, some particularly complex curl command from a PDF into your favorite tool, you will know that that doesn't always work well. And you can end up trying to glue things together in a text editor and then copy it across, all of which can introduce errors and, frankly, frustration. Um, the other area we see with the financial services sector is simply regulatory um, business barriers to access. Um, you can't just go and test them. Many services do provide sandboxes, but the sandboxes then were built separately to the infrastructure and do not accurately represent the security or the setup of how those systems work. Um, again, that leads to frustration, confusion, and uh, being unable to verify whether things work as you expected. A final part, which also touches on Phil's previous talk, is I call this my precious. Um, and it often comes from if you've spent X amount of dollars on a favorite tool or monitoring service from a company and in the banking sector and at some at scale, some of the monitoring tools can, can get quite spendy very quickly. You don't particularly want to go and buy something else or get something else that does a better job for APIs because APIs weren't part of the stack when you when you did the contract to, to buy the tool from the, the giant software vendor who sold it to you. But reliance and over-reliance on tools that aren't fit for purpose can genuinely lead to an inability to see what the other person is seeing. And that comes back to my opening statement of trust. If you can't agree on what you're measuring, you will not be able to reach agreement on other things as well. And it becomes very difficult for anybody to prove anything to anyone without having, uh, without having a view of uh, whether you've measured the same thing in the same way. So I'm going to do some an example here from a metric that's actually used by the British reg, uh, the British uh, Open Banking UK regulator or quasi regulator, and they use the measurement of time to first byte as one of the mandated requirements of how fast API should work. 
And essentially what you're doing with time to first buy is it's uh, a metric to indicate to a client or user how quickly they should get the first bite back from a request. So the prob first problem emerges that the measurement of time to first buy at the gateway or at the, the, the side it's being served at from a provider, which in this case is usually a bank. Um, so in the UK, that would be a Barclays, a Santander, a HSBC, um, Lloyd's, et cetera, is different to the experience of the client because the client is not in the bank's infrastructure. The client is the other side of the firewall. It's out in the cloud doing things in the cloud. So there is already a delta built in between the classic time to first byte, which is this T1 to T6, and the actual experience measured from T0 to T6. So the T0 to T1 measurement just gets completely ignored. And that can be non-trivial if you've got a misconfigured infosec setting in your gateway or in your internet security, that can run into hundreds of milliseconds that you're essentially pretending don't to exist. But it gets cleverer than that because you have to remember the first byte is always a H in a HTTP1 API. So what a lot of APIs started doing was, well, we know it's going to be a H, so we'll just return the H straight away often in microseconds, not milliseconds, actual microseconds. And that gives ludicrously good time to first bytes. Um, you could call it gaming the system, or you could call it perfectly fair and allowed, but it doesn't give a fair representation of what the number the client is experiencing, because at the end of the day, the only number the client really cares about in this scenario is T7, the time to last byte as received by their client application. And that's just one example of how it works in the internet, in web APIs, but it is definitely a key issue. So to sum this up, perception matters. When stakeholders measure and consume APIs, they often do it differently and perception can be different from the reality. Where you measure things and how you measure them is, is just as important as what you measure because you can measure the same thing but get very different results uh, depending on how you've done it. And your existing tools and the way you use them may not bring you consensus on that. So I've given this talk a few times, and, and these are my, my three things of what we're missing. We don't have industry-wide agreement on what and how we should measure. Um, we should always spell check our presentations before we give them, um, so you don't notice that there is a spelling mistake in the second bullet point. I'll fix that later. But we should always measure in production, and we should always measure from the outside in. And we should agree on what we're measuring to do so we can do it in the same way at the same time. But again, the, these are not standards. No one's writing down how we do this. There is no open API standard for how we measure yet. Parties in dispute need to have somebody outside the delivery train to help mediate. There is no mechanism in place in the industry for that. And we need agreement on what is good or bad within open ecosystems. We actually need to have some agreed, this is a good metric versus that is not a good metric. And ideally, we should have multiple companies, just like we do in financial services, giving you credit ratings on, on different people. We should have different ways of rating APIs. And I'm very excited to, to essentially introduce you today the API Rating agent, Agency, which um, I've been uh, pushing for for a long time. So has Mehdi, who runs API Days. And finally, we've, got, we've persuaded enough people in the industry that this is a good idea that we can get started on some of the things I've been talking about today, which I think are critical to this, this problem. It's going to be independent. It will be cross-industry, and, and essentially it will be an advisory group looking at the policy for things that are not in the standards. We have an open API specification, but we don't have a specification for how we measure things, what we measure, what needs to be in your contract for your APIs, what is good governance, what is not, and setting some policy for participants in API ecosystems for how um, we can handle disputes and how we can handle the discussions between engineering teams, managers, and regulators, the, the three stakeholders in my, uh, in my example. And we founded this week the board. Um, Don Thibault, who is uh, formerly head of uh, the International Institute's Open Digital Trust Group, he's also a former Open Identity Foundation executive. He's agreed to be the interim chair. Uh, John Musser is joining us. Uh, most people know John from his founding of Programmable Web. He's actually head of APIs at Ford Motor Company at the moment. Lorinda Brandon is joining us too. She's VP of Engineering at Better Cloud. 
Before that, she was director of engineering at Twilio, and she's an Open API Initiative board member. Um, in Lorinda's words, one of the challenges she has in her current job at Better Cloud is if two of their vendors are not performing, there is no mechanism for her to have an open and frank discussion using the same terms between those two vendors and themselves. And she wants to work on this definition of how we agree terminology and measurement standards and ways to configure our monitoring and our, our tooling and our documentation in a way that when we say that something is not right, we are all talking about the same thing and not comparing apples with cats. And finally, uh, Brian Costello. Brian is currently a proposition lead at the Global Open Finance Center of Excellence. He is also a VP of Data Strategy at Yodely Investnet. He's bringing some of the financial services perspective. And we expect to be naming a, a number of other uh, people, to, uh, members and uh, board participants in the next few weeks. We're just getting ready to go live with our charter. Um, so where, where are we starting? Um, we're starting with the things that I've been talking about this morning, uh, afternoon, if you're in Europe. Um, hard metrics, performance, the how, what, why, and where of how we measure. Um, where should you measure from? Should you how, If you have to measure, you should measure in production. Setting guidelines that are essentially sometimes rejected by management teams when engineering teams know that they ought to do things a certain way. And we want to give engineering groups and DevRel groups a bit of cover when it comes to, hey, it's not just us making up that we want to do it this way to be difficult. These are the standards the industry is expecting from us. The next set is the soft metrics, the specification and documentation, best practices, um, non-performance metrics. Do you have an open API specification? Is it right? Have you can you demonstrate it's right? Um, what is your time to first call metric? Uh, another important number that uh, postmen often talk about a lot. So things about how you use the APIs and how, how everybody should have the same set of systems when they talk about how they work. And then finally, other considerations. Um, Phil, in his previous speak, talk, talked a lot about SLAs. Um, that's a very critical part. We don't have a framework for agreeing on how an SLA should be measured, what it should be, what the potential um, impact of falling outside the SLA should be. But also, do you stand behind your API? Um, Google have just switched to a system for actually saying we will not deprecate APIs and shut you down. I think that's something that everybody should sign up to. And I, I'm, I'm pushing for it to be part of the charter and the, the agreements for the API rating agency. And then finally, part of that will be dispute resolution best practices. So these are the things we're starting with. Um, we're hoping this to be a very open cross-industry um, operation, um, cr created initially as something that we want to get together and do rather than something formal. It may become more formal over time. But if you are interested, please feel free to reach out to me and uh, ask any questions you have. Uh, I will be sharing my slides and my contact details. And then finally, um, a plug for what we do. Um, if you are interested in SLAs and API metrics, um, you can use our product to monitor things. But uh, we have a service called API Expert, which is aiming to bring some of the work that the API ratings agency will do into the public domain. I'm a great believer in uh, openness and 360 degree visibility being absolutely key to the success of the API ecosystems and API economy in general. And we're publishing league tables of some of the uh, 100 at the moment. It's about 160 top API providers from major banks through to all of the, the key corporate IT and messaging APIs that you're familiar with. And our goal is to have full collections with scores, with uh, using our rating score, the CASC score, um, in public in a way that everybody can see for free all the time with a premium version where you can go and look at the uh, look at the details behind the scores. And obviously, if you want to monitor your own APIs, we have that as a, as a SaaS product as well. So um, that's the, uh, the crux of my talk. I think there's quite a lot to go through in 20 minutes, but I hope I haven't, um, I haven't blown you away too much or confused you. And uh, thank you for your attention. Back to uh, Jennifer, I think. Thank you so much, minutes. David. Yeah, thank you so much. It's definitely exciting. You buried the lead that you've started a whole agency with some big name players that I've known for years and years in the API industry. 
what are some gaps you need to fill in that board? What are you looking for um, in terms to of be people, honest, um, industry? I do not know yet. Um, and, and a part of the part of that is I've been the catalyst to bring this together, and uh, I was happy to do so because I am quite passionate on this topic. But I am not the person who should lead or run this moving forward. Uh, I'm going to hand that over to Don Tebow, and the board should elect amongst themselves an actual chairman and leader. Uh, partly because my day job is monitoring APIs, and I, you know, we, the person, the 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 the, the fox is not a good uh, hen house watcher, uh, as as they say in English. I I, I you know I I have an interest in the success of this, but I also have a fiduciary interest. So I'm not going to be too involved in the day to day, but I. I think we're going to have at least four or five separate work streams and we should have people from financial services. We should have people from general engineering.